Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Fife by Pegasus Spiel. <laughs> yeah, this is Fife or Fife or Fifa. I'm, we're not 100% sure how this is pronounced, so apologies at the start of this video. But it is from Pegasus Spiel, and this is a game in which you are going to be drawing tokens out of a bag, placing them on your 5x5 five five grid, and then you will be placing surfboards around the outside of that grid to determine what order you needed to place those tokens in the grid to score points. I know that probably doesn't make any sense, so let me show you how it works down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Fife on the table from Pegasus Spiel. Let me show you guys how this tile placement game works. Now, for setup, everybody is going to have their own player board here. They're going to also have their own set of scoring boards and lucky shells, lucky clams. And uh, that will be what you have for each player. In the center of the board, you're going to have the bonus tiles laid out. And you'll make a reserve here for the joker tiles and the bonus points. You also have a bag full of tokens that you will be drawing throughout the course of the game. And uh, these tokens are wooden and uh, they are going to come in several different varieties here. You're gonna have lots of numbers, lots of objects on them, lots of colors. And so that is the setup for this game. Now, what you will do on your turn, this is a game in which you are going to be taking the tiles, the tokens that you draw from this bag, and you are going to be placing them somewhere on your five by five grid here. And you are trying to achieve these victory conditions or these uh, scoring conditions over here, such as this one right here. You'll get five points if wherever you place this, so if I place it right here like this and this column right here, if I'm able to get two of one color and three of another color, this is the color icon here and A and B tells me I need two of one type and three of a different type, like a full house. If I am able to do that, I will get five points. So that is what the objective in this game, or the idea anyhow. How this works, on the first turn, everybody is going to draw two tokens out of this bag. And so here are my two tokens. And I place those two tokens down here at the bottom of my board on these plates right here. And from this point forward, every round thereafter, I would only draw one token from this bag because out of these two tokens that I have here, one of them I'm going to place somewhere on my board. So maybe I take this forward and I put it right there in the center. And uh, once I've placed a token, I look at the row and the column in which I've placed that token. And if I don't already have a scoring objective, placed in either one of those two spots. Then I have to take one of these over here and place them in one of the two spots. So maybe I take this one here, and each of these have their own iconography. This one obviously means that if I place all different numbers in that row or column, then I'll get seven points. And maybe I slot it in right there like so. Now that I have one in this row, from that point forward on a future turn, if I were to place another token in that row, I would not have to place one of my scoring objectives uh, here, for instance, because I already have one in the row that that token is in. And that's how a turn works. I place, I draw a token, choose one of the two that I have to place somewhere out on the board. If I don't have a scoring objective, I'm going to place one in either the row or column, and then that would be the end of the round. Now, a few other things may take place throughout the course of the game. The first is that if somebody were to draw one of the lucky clam shells from the bag, this is going to allow all the players, not even just the one who drew this, but all the players at the table, to be able to use one of their lucky shells over here. Now, each player has the same set of lucky shells, and they're going to allow you to do different things. Uh, there's iconography here, and you do have to kind of reference the rule book before you get familiar with what all these icons mean and what they let you do. But they're going to let you do special things that sort of break the rules, such as moving a token that's already placed somewhere on your board to an empty spot, because otherwise, once you've placed it somewhere on your board, it's stuck there for the rest of the game exchanging out tokens that are on your plates here for new tokens from the bag. You get the idea. 
And if you use these, you're just going to flip it over because they are one-time use. If you do not use these, they are going to give you victory points at the end of the game. So there is a give and take here whenever you draw this. Now, if somebody does draw this, you do not have to use any of your lucky shells here. You can just leave them be, uh, but you can only use them when one of these are drawn from the bag. And that would happen prior to placing out any of your scoring objectives for that round. The other thing that will happen throughout the course of the game is, is that you may fulfill a scoring objective. So for instance, if uh, this is what my board looks like, and I've drawn a five here, and I'm going to place that five right here, I have fulfilled this scoring objective. I will turn this over. Uh, or actually, these would be on this side of the board with the uh, score half covered up to indicate you haven't fully achieved that yet. I would flip it over this way to show that I have achieved it. And if I am the first person to fulfill this particular one, then I get to claim the same marker out here for the bonus, this one right here, and I get to put it on my board over here to indicate that I've got three extra bonus points for this particular one because I was the first one to do it. Now, everybody else at the table can still fulfill their own. Everybody has the same objectives, but they will not be able to claim this first uh, bonus to be able to put it on their board unless they do it the same round that I did it in. Now, that's one thing that can happen. Another thing that will happen throughout the course of the game, if you're playing it very cleverly, you may fulfill more than one scoring objective in the same turn. And if you do so, you get five bonus points. Now, if you do two in the same turn, you get five bonus points. If you do three in the same turn, you get 10 bonus points. And if somehow you were able to fulfill more than that, you would get more bonus points. Uh, and that can happen because there are these diagonal ones here. So it is possible to fulfill four in one turn if that token that you're placing is right here in the middle because you could fulfill the column, the row, this diagonal, and that diagonal. It's pretty rare that you'll be able to do that, but if you did, that would be a huge game changer. Now, some of the other shells out here are going to allow you to play these joker tiles, and these joker tiles are going to be placed on top of tiles that you already have on your board, and it simply means that this tile now becomes whatever you need it to be to be able to fulfill these objectives, and you can change what it means for this objective and then that objective up there and any of the other objectives that you might need it to be to fulfill it. You're going to play 25 rounds because there are 25 spots on your board. And uh, then you'll count up your points based off of objectives, bonuses, any bonuses that you would have gotten because you fulfilled more than one scoring objective in the same turn, and your points on your shells that you did not use. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner, and that's how you play Fife. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and now we're going to share our thoughts on Fife from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective while you check out some gameplay footage. So Sam, we have played so was a few games with this similar idea yeah. where you are placing things in a grid that will ultimately score you points based off the arrangement that you've placed them in. Um, one game that comes to mind is Downtown Farmer's Market, a game yes. that you and I played earlier this year that we really enjoyed. I, yeah. And, and very similar idea, not the same theme, but similar yeah. mechanic. So what, did you, what, what, do you, what do you feel about these types of games? I like it. It's kind of like... It's not, but it kind of feels like build your own board game. Okay. Um, just because you are choosing how it's going to play out. Yeah. Um, but it, it's they're very thinky games, mm -hmm. more so than you realize um, until you're playing it. And yeah. then you're like, okay, I really... It, they're longer games because of the time it takes to think about each move. Sure. So um, you really have to... Um, have the time to sit and watch someone think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yep. and sometimes people just don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It's. It's a quieter experience. These types yes. of games because there's not much player interaction. In fact, in this game, there's there's not really any at all. Yeah. Other than maybe you draw a shell on yeah. your bag pool, and that helps everybody at the table. Yeah. That's the only interaction that really happens in this game. Yeah. Uh, and and I, well, I sh I, let me take that back. You can achieve scoring goals before somebody else, yes. scoring bonuses. There is some player interaction on that, but you're not doing anything to Each disrupt someone else's plans, right? Yes. Not like you might be in a drafting game where yes. you can see I'm really going for 
uh, yeah, you see, know, there's not a, there's not a take that right. Or screw yeah, there's you aspect. right exactly. And I think that was probably the downside, maybe to downtown farmers market because it was drafting. Right, and I could draft what you needed. Yes, and even if it didn't work for me, yes. I could hate draft. Yes. Well, you don't have that being a factor with this game. Yeah. You are simply going off of what you pull from the bag. But I will say, I think one thing about this game is that you only have two yes. tokens that you're working with here. And so you you don't have lots of choices. Yeah. You only have two choices. Uh, what do you think about that? That was frustrating because there's so many. It's a five by five grid. That's pretty big. Yeah. Um, and to only have two tokens to choose from. Um, some may say because it's five by five, you have more places to put it, but you also have every access and yeah. What's the opposite of access? <laughs> I don't know, y and X access. X, X and Y has um, has a different surfboard, a different goal. Right. Um, and it's so much to keep track of. You almost have to put one down and be like, I'm not going to get this. I know I'm not going to get this. You do. This is the line that I'm just going to put anything. That this is my fit. junk line. Yes. Yeah. But if you're not careful... You're going to mess up another line because yep. of that. You, you will, yeah. So it is, I thought I found it very difficult to pick what my um, horizontal and vertical goals were going to be. Yeah, for sure. Um, because my little farm shop, um, Farmer's Market, what's it called? <laughs> Downtown Farmer's That's Market. That's right. My little farm shop's a different yeah, game. It's, a different game. <laughs> um, it's the opposite. Your kind of the opposite you're uh -huh. you're starting with your accesses yeah and then adding to the middle this one you're slowly adding your accesses right. yeah yeah um yeah i know you're exactly right and this is a game that is uh, my uh, similar experiences that i've had in roll and write kind of games where you're doing a little bit of guessing in the beginning of the game just sort of placing things here and there and you're not exactly sure how it's all going to play out. Yeah. Uh, but you get maybe a third of the way into the game and you start to develop an idea. You get two thirds of the way into it and you start to see how things start to fall apart. And it's the last third of the game where it sort of feels like, or at least my experiences are in these types of games, it sort of feels like everything that I had been working up for is all just <laughs> crumbling down like a yes. house of cards. And it always leaves me with that gut it, punch of, very, it didn't work out. Yes, it's surprisingly a very low scoring game. Yes. And that's, for all the work you put in, it's kind of like, <laughs> yes. oh good, I ended with 12. Yes. Like, that's, yeah. it was very frustrating. Yeah, I will agree with that. Yeah, it, it, it seems like, yeah, I'm going to get a lot of points because I've got uh, 15 different ways to score. I think it's more like 10 or 11 yeah. different ways to score, plus the bonus points, but it, it doesn't work out that way yeah. <laughs> you don't get nearly even no, half of them yeah unless you're doing really good yeah, and you're getting really lucky really, pools really bad so. all right let's get to our pros and cons i know we've kind of hammered this game a little bit up to this point but sam what were the things you did enjoy it, it's a fun game to play it's it's really fun it's it's frustrating but in a in a good way like it's just one of those games where you know, now that I've played it once, I know the feeling of that game. And so I'll play it again. I know it's going to be a low scoring game. I know it's going to be frustrating. But at the same time, you're like, I can do better. Yeah. Like you play it and you're like, I can do better. Yeah. I, I want to try it again. It is addicting. I will agree yeah. with you on that. And so I guess I can say that that's something that I don't always experience with rolling rights is yeah. that it's, it leaves me with wanting to try again. Usually I'm, I'm a lot of times I'm left feeling like, well, that stunk. I hated the way that ended. Yeah. With this, even though it didn't, you know, it, it didn't end on a high note, I still felt like, well, I could do better. Yeah. I want to try yeah, again. Yeah, we played this last night, and I'm like, I want to I want to do it again. I can do better next yeah. time. I can try harder. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's good. I, I think the the artwork is really cool, and it's a unique concept, even though we'd, we've seen it with Downtown, <laughs> downtown farmers, farmers market. market. I'm gonna forget. You've that. only said it like five yeah. times in this video. <laughs> if I, you know, we that there's still very different games. The idea that you're making it as you go. Yeah. You're not because they could have easily said, pick your surfboards, make, put them where you want them, 
then start drawing from the bag. But you're right. adding the surfboards as you go. Yeah. And I don't know which so way I you, like it more. <laughs> you, you do get a little more freedom because of that, because now I've already placed yes, three Yes, because as things two, change, you can be like, okay, well, now I, I know I'm not going to use that one. Yeah. You can kind of save some of the easier ones for near the end. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's constantly, your board's constantly evolving. Yeah. And you're constantly messing it you're, up. You're, you're just mad at yourself. Yes. Why did I make that yeah, choice? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what doesn't work so great for you? What are some cons? Um, I think we've said um, with a two-player game, the chances of you drawing a shell are small. Yes. I think they needed to add some extra shells that you could throw in there in a two-player game just because there's only two of us drawing from the same bag that in a five-player game they'd be drawing out of. Yeah. So in a five-player game, it's much more likely that someone's going to draw a shell. And when drawing right. a shell, everyone benefits yeah. from that. Yeah. And, and so Sam's talking about those bonus shells yes. that allow you to be able to break the rules a little bit and have a little bit more of adva an advantage over the randomness of the bag pool and, and building your board based off of a random pool. Yeah. When you don't get those bonus draws in a, in a two-player game because you're not drawing out as much, you're at the mercy of the bag more than you would be in a five-player game. Now, one could argue, well, five players, more people are taking out the shells that you might need. Yeah, that could be true as well. But you're getting more of an advantage by being able to use those bonus shells to uh, uh, mitigate the bad pools. Yeah. So um, I don't know that it, it, it's created as equal, a five-player game and a two-player game. Yeah. Yeah, I will agree with that. Because I think we, we only drew it twice, I think, yeah. in our game. Yeah, it did. All right, so let's get to our scores then. Uh, scale of one to ten, love to hate. Where does Fife come in at? Um, I think I would give it a solid seven. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a fair score. Um, any any comments that you'll add to that? Um, it's a good game. I I want to play it again. I want to try try it again. Um, and and that my score might change as I play it more. It could be that every time it's just that frustrating and maybe I'm done playing it, or it could be you get better at it and it does become more enjoyable. Okay. So I think it just depends. Uh, yeah, for me, I'm really in the same ballpark. I was going to say 7.2. Um, this is a game that, I, I like we mentioned earlier, it does leave me wanting more. It leaves me wanting to try again, see if I can get better at it. I think that's it. something good to have in a yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. It, it, I feel like it could have been a little more elegant in terms of not needing as many components or not needing as many different icons and, and different... Uh, rules that I needed to kind of reference back to the rulebook. Okay, so what does this shell do, or what's this scoring uh, sh surfboard yeah. for? It, it could have just been a little uh, stripped down a little bit more for me. Um, but all in all, is a is a solid experience. Yeah. Seven point two. So. Well, there you have it. That's our thoughts on Fife. It is from Pegasus Spiel. It is a uh, game that. Uh, yeah, you know, one we're going to keep trying out, I think. So leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think of it. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.